Hey, this is the Mighty Over here on Mix 1080 AM WFO Radio, CLB TV, and the internet at WFOAM.com and YouTube at CLB TV, home of one of the greatest internet TV stations in the land and around the world. As we talk about the Buffalo Bills and what they're going to do in my next edition of my mock draft, this mock draft concentrates on the weakest deficiency on the Buffalo Bills this year, and that was their pass rush. I see the Buffalo Bills being aggressive, going after South Carolina's Melvin Ingram in the first round. South Carolina uh, product Melvin Ingram will add a devastating uh, area to the pass rush of the Buffalo Bills. I believe this young man might be the ultimate steal of the draft. At the 10th pick, Melvin Ingram, should do a lot for the Buffalo Bills as they move to a 4-3 base defense. In the second round, I have the Buffalo Bills going after Andre Branch, defensive end from Clemson, addressing the biggest deficiency on this football team is their pass rush. If you can develop a pass rush in this league, you help out all your defensive backs. All of a sudden, your defensive backs get much, much better. Now, in the third round, we have to address the area of, of cornerback. Because we have an aging Terrence McGee who is coming off a torn patella injury to his knee, and the fact of the matter, he is now 31 years old, you've got to address uh, the area of cornerback. And I think in the third round, you can take Dwight Bentley, a cornerback out of Louisiana Lafayette. And then the Buffalo Bills also have to you know, face the reality that Leotis McElvin had issues last year, good and bad, plus he's coming off a of shoulder surgery, so you got to look at the air of cornerback as a need on our defense. Now, in the fourth round, I believe this might be another steal of the draft. You stay in Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette at that, and go after Ladarius Green, tight end out of Louisiana Lafayette, great size, great speed. This is a guy that I think can solidify your tight end position. I don't believe Scott Chandler is the answer at that position, and I'm questioning whether or not uh, the Buffalo Bills even bring him back because he, he seems like he wants a big raise, and I don't think he's just worth that, not to me. I think you need to move in another direction of a Darius Green and teach this guy the game through OTAs will be ready to play for you come the first game of the season. Another pick in the fourth round, I think, this young man fits what Chan Gailey wants to do on offense better than any prospect coming out as a quarterback. Russell Wilson of the University of Wisconsin, though he's not tall, he's only 5'11", but this guy has the skill set to not only uh, be a quarterback that moves around what Chan Gailey likes to do, but I think he can be a better quarterback than the quarterback we got on the roster. And that's Ryan Fitzpatrick because he can throw the ball accurately. He's not tall. He reminds me of a better prototypical quarterback uh, like the recent version of Michael Vick. Not the young Michael Vick, but the recent version of Michael Vick, Russell Wilson, fills that bill. Now, I'm not going to go past the fourth round because uh, the other slots have to be given and they won't be as accurate. So with this mock draft, we're looking at the fact that the Bills have two picks in the fourth round. They have one pick in the third round. One pick in the second round, one pick in the first round. Let's go back over it again in this mock draft. Melvin Ingram, defensive end from South Carolina. Andre Branch in the second round, defensive end from Clemson. In the third round, Dwight Bentley, cornerback from Louisiana Lafayette. Stay at that school. Come back with Ladarius Green, tight end from Louisiana Lafayette. And at the fourth, uh, the other fourth round pick, we pick up a guy that can solidify our quarterback position at Russell Wilson, uh, quarterback from the University of Wisconsin, who I believe could be a uh, serious, serious steal in the draft. Also, one final note. Once again, in returning uh, from the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, I was witness to one of the most appalling displays of the NFL Writers Association that had votes in the Hall of Fame. They not only ignored uh, four really Hall of Famers, potential Hall of Famers, and should have been voted in this year. And I'm talking about uh, Coach Bill Parcells, who I believe has the credentials to be in the Hall of Fame, uh, bar none. 
I'm also talking about Tim Brown, one of the great receivers in history, uh, great Oakland uh, Raider receiver out of Notre Dame. Chris Carter, great receiver uh, from Philly and Minnesota out of Ohio State. And the great Andre Reed uh, from the Buffalo Bills and Kuhnstown State University out of Pennsylvania. Uh, these four individuals should have been voted in the Hall of Fame this year. I'm not taking away anything from the, from the gentleman that went in. But those four individuals, along with, I believe, Charles Haley, uh, have the credentials that they should have been in the Hall of Fame before, the, before uh, this time frame. And I don't see how you could put together a ballot and say that you had uh, five individuals or four, in, four of those individuals uh, better uh, than the one that you have. Do those guys deserve to go in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. But not before Bill Parcells, Charles Haley, Andre Reed, Tim Brown, and Chris Carter. Those five individuals, I think, have been severely snubbed over the last few years. And one of the suggestions I have uh, for the Hall of Fame committee and the NFL, and this is really for Roger Goodell, you need to rotate those 44 voters. Each one should have a three-year term, and you take seven at a time, seven come on, seven come off. And that way you can uh, eliminate this constant every year philosophy on who should be in the Hall of Fame. You shouldn't have the same guys year in and year out voting on who are the greatest players because you, you get their bias. John Clayton doesn't like Jerome Bettis. So obviously that's why Jerome wasn't going in. And these are things you have to realize. These are guys that cover these guys on a daily basis. And you need to rotate them in and rotate them out and let their credentials speak for themselves. I think that's the only way you can get rid of some of these biased log jams, especially at the receiver position. There's some guys that don't like Paul Tagliabue and say what you want, but he was the commissioner of the NFL approaching a period when the NFL became the greatest sport in this country. And certainly the person that's the head of an entity should be given some of that credit and deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I think some of these biases from the 44 voters is becoming too instrumental in dictating who goes in and who goes out. Roger Goodell and the Hall of Fame, you need to rotate those 44 voters. Give us that are NFL certified an opportunity to spend a term as a Hall of Fame voter and keep the process moving around so biases are, do not come about each and every year. That's all for the Mighty Over here on our weekly sports update. We'll see you next week with our weekly sports update, mock draft for the Buffalo Bills, and there was a snub at the Hall of Fame. That's what we talked about this week. We'll see you next week.